Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is the set timer by function or event name? These are the two nodes we're going to cover here: set timer by event and set timer by function name. They basically perform the same function. They're going to set a timer that's going to call an event or a function. It's going to do or execute that timer after a certain amount of time has passed. And then once it's done, it's going to either repeat if you have looping turned on or it's going to do nothing. A good use for this is if you want maybe to destroy your actor after seven seconds, you could set up a timer to destroy after seven seconds. Or maybe you want something repeating like the character has a health regeneration function and after 10 seconds of combat, after being out of combat for 10 seconds, maybe you then want to regenerate every one second. So you could use a timer to do that. You can use a tick for any of these methods. However, since a tick fires every frame, it may produce more overhead or cost more CPU power than if you just set a timer if you don't need something to be accurate. These timers will fire as close to the time as possible. It can't be exact because you may want to fire at 3 seconds and your frames may fire at 3.01 second or 2.995 seconds. So it's going to get as close to it as possible. Now let's see how they work. They have two things that are going to be in common. This will be our time, which is basically once this node is fired, how long until the event or the function that you tell it to run will run. So it's basically a delay before it fires. Looping is whether or not it will continue to fire every time in seconds. So if, for example, by default these are set to 0, 0.0 and not looping. If I was to just run this now, nothing's going to happen. 0, 0.0 is going to cause a timer basically to clear itself. And no looping means, well, don't loop. So we're going to run nothing. Let's go ahead and set up an example. I'm going to hook up my button in my designer. And when we fire it, it's going to fire off our set timer. We're going to go for the set timer by function name first. And we're going to fire off this little function I've created here. Now this one is broken on purpose so I can show you an issue. What it's going to do is basically get the time in seconds since the game has started and print out that time. It's going to add one to our current health value and put it on the screen. It's going to set that to our health value and then it's going to delay for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, it's going to go ahead and print after delay time, and it's going to print out the time. So it's pretty simple. It's meant to just show delayed flow. Now it's named increase health, so I need to put in that exact name here in my function name. And I need to spell it properly too, apparently. So it's going to fire off increase health. Now it says function name but if you read the description it says can be a function or custom event and that's important to know this is a custom event I created but it could easily work with a function which I'll show in a second now the time is going to be the time we want our timer to fire at I'm going to go with three seconds so once this node executes after three seconds this function is going to run now this object and looping we're going to ignore for now, but I will get right back to them. Let's go ahead and just see this run once. Let's run it, and we have the do something. After three seconds, it's going to say our start time. It's going to increment to one, and right now it's running a 10 second delay. So approximately 15 seconds here, 15 seconds, it goes ahead and it finishes our event. Pretty simple. Now if I wanted to continue running, I could check looping, and we could go ahead and run this. Now we're going to run into a problem, and it's a problem on purpose. You would expect we would see 5 seconds, our timer starts, and then after 15 seconds, we would get our print string after a delay. And it would continue every 3 seconds. 
there's our after delay. But you'll notice we're not going to get another after delay for another 10 seconds. After delay 27 seconds. Now if we wait another 10 seconds approximately, rather than it being 3 seconds, 10 seconds, we're only getting 1 every 10 seconds. Even though our start time is happening every 3 seconds, 41, 44, and you'll notice this number at the end isn't exact. Like I said, it's as close as possible to 3 seconds. And you notice our timer's running, our event's still running, our counter's still going up, our start time is still incrementing every 3 seconds like we want it. But our end time is only incrementing once every 10 sec, not every 10 seconds, but once only every third or fourth run through. And there's a reason for that. It's got nothing to do with our timer. It has to do with our delay node. And if you read it, it tells you calling again while it is counting down will be ignored. So we are calling the delay node in this event. And even though we're calling the event again, and you'll notice the values are going up, our time is going up, and it's treating each one separately, it's still the same event. Therefore, this node is still sitting here waiting for its 10 seconds to go down. And because we're trying to do it again after 3 seconds, and then again after 3 seconds, again after 3 seconds, and then it fires, it's basically ignoring everything from here on because we're basically calling it again. So keep that in mind, a delay node, if it's called again while it's counting down, is going to simply be ignored. So let's go ahead and see this in function. Let's go ahead and make a function called func increase health. And we're going to copy our stuff in there. And we're going to get an error, and it's going to be an error on purpose. So I'm copying all of my code from my event, and I'm pasting it into here. And you'll notice down here we have an error. Conflicting nodes substituted during paste. And if you're not looking at it carefully, you may not figure out what's wrong. Well, functions cannot have delay nodes. So you'll notice it completely chopped our delay node out. Now this is called func increase health. It's really simple. We go back into our graph and we simply change our function name to our function. We'll call it func increased health. Increase health, there we go. And we'll go ahead and run it. Now you'll notice it's going to fire off after three seconds and then immediately fire off the end event because we don't have our delay node anymore. But you'll notice it is firing off. Every three seconds, our timer is repeating, and this time it is running it in the function rather than out here in the event. And all we did was just change the name. So keep in mind, function and name, it can take either one. So our last two parts, well, we did looping, we did this. So our last part is our object. Now, object and event are what's unique and separating pretty much these two items. Object by default refault, defaults to self, as in I want to run this function or event on this blueprint. But if you want to run it on a different blueprint, you can. And you can only do it with the set timer by function. What I'm going to do is get my player character. I'm going to cast it to my generic character and make it pure so that way I don't have to run it. And then I'm going to run a function on my player character. Now on my player character, I have one called print health value. We're going to go ahead and type that in here. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and run that. Now you'll notice after three seconds, it's going to run the print health value, which says 100. Three more seconds, and it's just going to continue. Nothing fancy, but what it's doing is it is reaching out to this object and running this function name, which is right here. Now if we were to change this to print health value X and hit play and hit do something, you're going to find after three seconds nothing happens. It's not going to fail and give us an error. It's going to fail silently. It's basically saying, hey you, whatever our object is, do this. And if it's not there, it can't do it, so therefore nothing's going to happen. So that covers our set timer by function node in detail. Now let's swap this out for our set timer by event. And this one's pretty simple. You'll notice it has the time and the looping. 
but it doesn't have a function name or an object. And that's because you're going to directly tell it what it's going to run. And it needs an event delegate. If you look at an event, you'll find a little node here. This is the output. We can plug it in here. And basically, this is saying set timer by event, run the event we're hooked up to, which is going to be this one right here. So if we hit play and we do something, after three seconds, we'll get our start time. Assuming I hooked it up properly, you'll notice I didn't change my time. Now I've changed it to three seconds. We'll hit play. That is one thing that is important. Make sure you have the correct values. You notice it said start time, it increased to 1, 10 seconds later we'll get end time, and our event will be done. And that's it. Now this is useful because you can always drag off the event and add an event, custom event, right to it if you want. And then create your own custom event, event mine. And then of course do whatever you want from there. Now this one's useful if you want to have an event itself run and you want some flow. So you can track it like this. Personally I use the function one just because it keeps it cleaner and I don't have to have things hooked up. Now whoops did not mean to delete that. The one part I have not covered is our return node. You'll notice throughout all of this there is nothing I could do to the timer once it started. I can't pause it, I can't clear it, I can't check it. That's because when you fire off a timer, it creates a timer handle. That's this output node here. If I was to drag off and promote it to a variable, we'll notice over here in our description panel, it is a variable type timer handle. So that's something you want to keep in mind. If it's a one-time event and you don't really worry about it, and you're not using looping for example, you don't have to worry about the timer handle. If you know your intended use, just fire it. But if, for example, you're going to fire it until maybe the player's dead, or you want to check it every so often, make sure you use your handle, because without the handle, you will not be able to do anything to the event. This is where your things such as clearing, pausing, setting, getting, validating are all handled off of the handle for the timer itself. And those are covered in separate videos. So that is going to wrap up our set timer by function name and event nodes. 